Hello. I'm uh out here in my workshop or my uh where I make my points. And uh thought I'd do a video. Let's get that out so I don't get my debitage out on the floor. Doing a video on not just flint napping really. I might not even get a point out of this. I just want to demonstrate a tool I got. So uh, let's start out. Uh, freeze cracked. If you don't know who freeze cracked is, uh, you're probably not on Paleo Planet, or you're new to flint napping on YouTube. He's pretty well. Uh, from what I can see, he's been getting a lot of attention in his videos just because he makes very good videos on uh, flint napping. Very good instructional videos. Uh, he knows the issues that new beginner flint nappers have problems with, and those are the topics of his videos. And I commented on one of his obsidian working videos and if you haven't seen his channel I highly suggest checking it out but I went on his channel and I found some videos of him working obsidian and I had a problem with obsidian earlier and the problem was I couldn't get my flakes to travel far because I can get them thin I can get my bifaces thin but I couldn't get the flakes to run far without snapping the piece in half and he said that getting a fine abrader a super fine abrader would help because I'd be able to polish the platforms to make them run far so I don't have to make a huge uh, stout platform that would shock the edge too much and it works I just got one of these abraders from flint napping tools this is their super fine abrader and it works like a jewel works great uh, you can see the cuts that have gone into it because I've been using it so much but when you abrade with this you end up I don't know if you can see it you can see the white on that edge and that's from the polish it gives it and right now I'm doing it on small scale so you'll be seeing me do it with uh, with pressure but it it's a good demonstration on how well this abrader works. So I have pressure flake like this. This is my pressure tool. This is a I got the idea from Ken Wallace, Paleo Man 52. Uh, he's another channel you gotta check out. His channel is awesome. He's a great flint napper, and he's one of the people I credit with helping me learn to nap just by watching his videos but this is a moose antler tine with a hole drilled through it copper nail and a set screw so I can adjust the length of the nail and this is a pretty stout nail and it works really well it's almost like with pressure flakers the bigger your nail is the bigger stuff you can work on because it's the same as copper boppers or anything like that just with pressure so I'm gonna start flaking here and that ran in pretty well. You can see that. We're faced with removing a two ridges here. We got to get over both of them. And it's pretty hard to run a flake over them. Like I'll go over here because there's a natural ridge going in to try and get into it easier. So I'm not just flaking up. There's one that did nice. There's another one. That one did okay. Just, if you're beginner nappers, one thing I'd suggest is slab napping. Like, I mean, if, you, if you're serious about learning to nap, you're going to want to learn percussion. But if you just want to make points, I highly suggest working slabs of glass or obsidian. 
because they, they work really nice it, once you figure out how to place your tool, your pressure flaker. So, I've flaked up on this side pretty nicely. I've gotten it flaked. Now you can see there, this curves up a bit, but i got to turn the edge anyway to get rid of it. And I might end up with a shorter point if I even get a point out of this, but I'm okay with that. This is in a video about uh, conserving your stone, which I probably should make a video on because I'm sure that any new nappers are experiencing something similar to what I experienced. I'm from Pennsylvania, and we're rock-starved up here. No nice flint unless you look in the fields, and then you get stuff. It's not even a native. It's the Onondaga in the Asopus and Norman skill uh, from New York that was traded because we got I live right along the Susquehanna River and the famous points around here are Susquehanna Broad points and uh, we find those all around here and they're made of the Norman skill and Asopus uh, I assume that's what they are they're really tough black stone but then you can find Jasper in the southern counties. But I haven't had any luck doing that. It's not easy to find. I shouldn't say that there isn't any. It's just not easy to find. So I'm, I'm flaking this. And I might end up with just a little th thick point. I don't know. We'll see what happens. This is a piece of obsidian that came from oops that came from Eric's rocks I got a big package for Christmas of rock and he sent it to me with a big boulder of obsidian not a boulder for me it's a boulder because I haven't worked something that big in quite a while but he sent me that along with some other spalls and tree forms. And he sends really good rock. I mean, um, obsidian is tricky sometimes, because if you get an, a piece of obsidian that's filled with stuff like, uh, you got ra rainbow pockets, mahogany black, translucent. Sometimes when I've gotten mahogany in tiger stripe, the it has faults in it, it has seams. And, you know, I there's nothing that people can do to see that unless they start napping it down. I only get that in the real big spalls. But he sent me a really, really nice piece of obsidian. And it was great. This is just a piece that came off of it. And you can see there's black going through it. There's like a red obsidian. And then there's some tiger stripe that's trying to grow. Not grow, but... When it was forming, it had a bit of tiger stripe, and it just comes out in little places. So, yeah. I've been watching a PA Points videos, and I like his channel. Being a fellow Pennsylvanian, and I see saw his last video where he made a turtle, a uh, preform, a small preform with indirect, and I saw he was wearing a T-shirt when he was napping. I thought it was kind of funny because we're both getting the same weather, you know, or well, right now. You guys, if you've been paying attention to the news, you know that there's a blizzard going through the northeast. It's hitting the, closer to the coast, harder, like Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York City. But I'm not getting any of it. I don't know if he's getting any of it. But he was napping in a t-shirt, and I'm out here, and I have all my layers on, because there's no heat in my workshop. 
got a laugh out of it. But I'm just taking off flakes. I'm able to take a lot bigger flakes now that I have this abrader. And, you know, I'm not one that's going to do, like, adver advertising in my videos. Like, I'm calling anything as I see it. If I get good rock, if I get rock and I'm satisfied with it, I'll let, I'm going to let people know. And if I get rock that I'm not satisfied with, I'm going to let people know if I feel that it's some it's a problem. And I've gotten some good rock from Eric. Eric's a friend of mine. He's the first person I've met in napping. Eric, he uh, came to our Bald Eagle napping at Bald Eagle State Park. And uh, I didn't know anything about flint napping. And I went up there just because I was a little 12 year old kid. Of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not getting this on camera. A little 12 year old obsessed with the Indians, you know, wanting to learn everything I can. And I guess I've always been the type to sponge up information, everything I could learn about something that I'm interested in. And I didn't think going to this flint napping would result in me. Uh, I, I hate to, I don't know if I'm at the point where I can consider myself a flint napper. I do enjoy flint napping, but I can't compare to the great flint nappers like Jim Wynn and Ken Wallace and Marty Reuters. Uh, I think it's Reuters. Yeah, he's from Flint Napping Tips if you guys haven't seen his channel. His channel's really a good channel for Abo flint nappers. But I do know what I have to do to manipulate stone for me. You know, I mean, I'm not a professional. I don't know everything that I'm doing. Uh, one person, I think that he's just the... Uh, and, I mean, there's more people that I can name that are brilliant nappers. But he wrote the book on flint napping. And anybody that's been passionate about Flint Naffing knows who he is. It's D.C. Waldorf. Uh, I've never gotten to meet him. I wanted to go up to Letchworth because I imagine he'd be there. I think he's from New York. But I was going to go to New York to see him and then we couldn't make it up because we didn't get the reservation in for the park. You know, we were going to stay in the park. But that guy, I mean, he's a great Flint Napper. He's Flint Nap with the Danish daggers. He knows stone inside and out, square edge, percu percussion, indirect, pressure. He knows all about stone. And he's a great Flint Napper. And that's someone that I can only dream of becoming as good as. There are a lot of good flint nappers, and I'm I'm thankful that I'm growing. I'm learning in a time where I have access to a lot more. I mean, those guys. It makes them all the more respectable because they learned. Uh, they had to go to the library and find the books on it, and that's how I got into it originally. I I would go to the library and find any book I could. But these guys, they had to learn from trial and error. Or I can't say this for sure, but I know people that have had to because they didn't have the luxury of YouTube and the Internet in that time because YouTube's a relatively new thing. And I'm not the only one that sees you, uh, the Internet. I shouldn't just credit YouTube because, you know, the internet is filled with places like Paleo Planet is a flint napping forum. I waited a little while to get my membership to it because I didn't think there was a whole bunch of stuff on there that I needed to know. And only until I got my my account uh, did I know what a wealth of information was on Paleo Planet. I highly suggest it. But uh, you see people, Ken Wallace. I've mentioned them. I'm, I've mentioned the ones that I can think of on YouTube. Uh, George 
I almost called him George Lucas. I'm sorry. Lucas Nicholson. He's a good abo napper. And they're using YouTube and the internet to teach or help assist in teaching the younger generation of flint nappers and primitive enthusiasts. And it's, uh, it's a great asset to have the internet. Not all flint nappers have had it to assist in them learning. I don't know how well you guys can see this. I'm I'm new to filming my flint napping, so it might not be very good because I'm working. I have a uh, table beside me, and I have a sawhorse on the other side of me, and across is a piece of molding that we didn't use when we were redoing our house. Oops, I got a red leak. Oh well. But I have it leaning across. That was a good flake. Really good flake. And it's what I have my iPod on it. And my iPod doesn't give the best film, but it's what I have. It's what I'm going to use. I'm pretty new to YouTube, and you know, I guess this video is my opportunity to rant on about, I guess rant isn't the right word, but you know, say what I feel and what I uh, have been excited about on YouTube. I enjoy, I've always enjoyed being on YouTube. I didn't post videos but I mean for the past three years I've been using my brother Micah's account to comment and ask questions and the people on YouTube that are helping teach flint napping to the younger generation are so helpful because I've only had a few of my questions not get answered and they were just the simple things that were probably mentioned in a video or something but you gotta think how many questions these guys get on YouTube, they can't answer them all, so there's, I respect the guys that answer, you know, and I understand the guys that can't, but I've been impressed with how well represented the primitive community is on the internet. Uh, more specifically on YouTube, because we have the brain tanners, we got the full-on and primitive enthusiasts and practicers, like, uh, there's Tribe of Benderman, I know his name's Ben, I don't know his last name, he is, I probably watched his brain tan series 20 times when I was brain tanning for the first time. And I'll try and put some videos up of me brain tanning. Uh, you know, he was a real inspiration primitively for me. It's just, I, I can't stress enough how much... Uh, how many resources you have on the internet for learning about the, anything primitive, you know? Like, there's the full-on primitive living and the primitive archery. Tribe of Benjamin has it all there, I mean, from a primitive perspective. And then, I don't know, the guy's from Australia, but he has some really, really good, and the reason I say he's from Australia and what, the only reason that matters is because I'm not from Australia, and I know that many people tuning in aren't from Australia, and there's a bit of a difference between the landscape here and the landscape there. But his videos are awesome, because he does them all primitive. He just did a video on... Uh, 
a pump, dr well, a corded drill, which works like a pump drill, but you're not pumping, you're just pulling each end of the cord, if you're familiar with a pump drill. And it's a really cool video, and he, this guy, I didn't look at how many uh, views he's gotten until recently. The guy's got like, I think a quarter of a million subscribers. And that's a reflection on how good his videos are, what great material he puts up. And it shows him uh, all primitive, all, I mean, strictly primitive. And he, he does a good job with his videos because he doesn't spend time talking about it. He just goes real slow at a steady pace that people can follow. Like, uh, oops, felt like I was cutting my jeans. Yeah, you gotta be careful with this stuff, cutting your jeans. I got leather on this one leg, though. But he did a video about him making a chimney for in his hut. And that chimney acted as a kiln for when he made his clay pots. Like, the ground out there must be really clay rich because he gets a lot of clay. And uh, he was using, like he was making coil pots, and he was firing them in this thing. I'm starting to get flat. I'm starting to get in this thing flat. And i got to think about what shape I want it to be before I get it too thin. Or not thin, but skinny. I'm talking about, like, the length of crossed. But yeah, he does a really good job. Uh, of doing things all primitive. Tribe of Benjamin does a great job as well. If you're interested in leather, like making buckskin, Tribe of Benjamin is a place to learn about making buckskin. You know? But if you want to do stuff with your buckskin, Tribe of Benjamin has some videos on it that are very good videos. Very, very good videos. I've learned a lot. But, uh, his name is, I don't know his name. Uh, anyway, his YouTube channel is Tennessee Outdoors. And he brain tans, and he turns them into fabulous bags. Like, he just put up one video that can't, comes from a bushcrafter's perspective. And he took cow leather and buckskin and made just a beautiful bag it's a great looking bag and you know he he shows his stuff how he made them he does he tanned a couple furs I saw you put a video up on those he has a really good video when you if you get around to tanning hides because I say that because I always thought I'd do it well, I was wanted to do it, but I never really did until recently. But when you do do it, you're going to find out that cleaning the hides is a challenge. As in getting the stinky smell off, especially with coyotes. Think about your dog. Like, I skinned a coyote with uh, primitive methods, just using flakes. And that coyote tried getting into our dog kennels and, you know, killing our dogs. So he had to go, along with his buddy that he was hunting with, and I skinned him down, and man, if you've ever smelled one of the smelliest dogs, think about everything your dog rolls in that you don't want it to, and if your dog ever gets a hold of, like, a road killed animal or a, in my case a baby rabbit because I have rabbit hounds you know what it smells like well think about these dogs these coyotes they don't get to take baths they're just stanky and they're dirty and they're disgusting around here anyways because they're getting into garbage 
But this was in the woods where we took these. And I skinned it and it was horrid how smelly they were. So it's just, you respect what he's doing even more. Tennessee outdoors, you know, for, he knows how to get around those problems. And he has a good video on cleaning fur. I think we're going to end up with a pretty skinny point if I don't drop it. These, uh, and again, I'm just stating the things that I'm impressed about. And I enjoy using and I think that they're, they're great. They're great tools. Flintknappingtools.com is where I get all my stuff. I don't get a whole bunch of stuff. Well, I get from Flintknapping Tools anything that I can't make. Like I made all my copper boppers. But I can't make an abrader. I mean, you could find a hand a river stone but around here we don't have a whole a lot of variety oh shoot that thing broke and it went into my finger oh well hello I'm back um I kinda had some sucky shots on my way through and it messed up but I have this thing refined it's not a good example of a good point at all but it's, I'm not going to sell it. And if it ends up, it might, it's still not finished. So something could happen. So I'm doing the shaping. I'm no longer using an abrader. But I'm using another flaker. This is a different style. I have seen this used so many places I can't really credit the person I've learned it from. But it's got leather down in with the nail to wedge the nail in. So I don't know who really founded that or if there's a founder. Uh, but and this is a, a horseshoe nail. It's a nice mild steel. It's good for shaping and small work. When I sharpen it, it's not pointed, it's more like a spatula. Because when you think about when you do your notching, you don't really need a pointed flaker. You just need something that's thin. And it works well. It works well for this because it just takes off little itty bitty flakes. It's almost like I'm shearing to shape, but it's leaving an edge, and I'm probably going to abrade it off, because I'm going to, I don't leave the edges on my tools just so when I have people handle them, they don't cut themselves. This is my notching tool, but it works well as a shaping tool. Because when I want to take a flake, it takes a nice flake. But when I want to grind, or not grind, but shear, kind of, and take off just little flakes it works perfect for that so I kinda like the looks of that oh shoot <laughs> now if you see where that thing fell it landed in a puff and it didn't break I'm fortunate it didn't break because 
that would have been a lot of work going down in the toilet. But that's something you better get used to happening. Because that's part of learning is destroying something after you've put a lot of time into it. It took me a while to get a good point out of anything. I was doing it mostly with wine bottle bottoms. And I'd end up with a probably a four centimeter wide, no not four centimeters, uh, like a three and a half inch wide wine bottle. Then I'd get a teeny weeny point out of it. I wasn't good at conserving stone. I'm liking the looks of that. It's thick, but I'm going to go for it. So, and back then I was just so basic in my napping. I had like crappy tools. Then I went to the napping. So this thing's very, very sharp. I'm just going to get back to telling you guys about what I'm doing. Telling too many stories. I'm just going to braid this a little bit so that it's not cutting me. And I'm going to do side notches for this. I I think that any beginner napper should start out with side notching because it uh it's easier and it's less likely to blow out. So I'm just going to start here. Notching, you go in from the sides, you start real slow or else you'll blow out your edges. So and I don't go notch to notch. I do one at a time. And it's it works against me sometimes, but that's how I work. I don't suggest it. It just works for me. I also like doing my notching on a flat edge. We're getting into where you need to press down when you do your notches. You're getting deep because if you're not pressing down, you'll just grind it off and it'll be too stout. And if you try and take a flake, it either won't take one at all or it'll blow out the entire side or you'll break it in half. Mike Cook, who is the owner and operator of artofishy.com, is an excellent flint napper. And one thing I've envied of his napping is of how good he is. Wait, see if I can. Yeah, there we go. How good he is at notching. Like he does really exquisite notching. See, I've, I made a mistake. I'm pushing down, and I can't take, take a flake off very easy because I, <laughs> I'd hate to blame what I'm doing. It's because I've made a mistake, and I'm looking through the camera, and I'm looking at what I'm doing. But there is a way to get around it if you want a wider notch, but I don't want one. So I'm going to see if I can get around it. Still a chance. Still a chance. But yeah, Mike Cook uses a different method, which... If you go to his channel, it's just Mike Cook. And actually... See, I'm someone that... Uses the subscriptions. And... You know what? To the proportion of this point, that notch is okay. I I mean, I'm fine with that notch. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna... I don't know, the shape's alright, it's just, like, it's uncomparable to some of the, all of the points made by the great nappers, but it's a, it's a point, you know?
but Mike Cook has a really good video on notching, and I encourage you to check that out. But what I was saying was, I don't use the subscriptions on YouTube as like I subscribe to someone because they're my friend and I want them to, you know, have a lot of subscribers, and I don't want a lot of subscribers. I'm not trying to achieve. Sorry, I got it out of the camera. I'm not trying to achieve a goal that include involves me having all this attention. If I can teach somebody to something that they didn't know, something that I had a hard time finding when I was learning to flint nap, I mean, I, I've done what I've wanted to do. And I'm not here to get a bunch of subscribers or what, unfortunately, some too many young people do is go on to YouTube with the hopes of becoming famous and it's just ends up being disappointing I just want to help people learn the nap and learn to do different things in bushcraft and napping I keep getting off the freaking camera I'm sorry but I can't move because I got the tape on my finger because I had to plug a red leak darn things you probably can't see over my big stubby fingers but I use my subscriptions as a tool for me to keep an eye on different channels so I know when they upload videos because I'm interested in their videos. And if you're interested in my videos and want to see more, then subscribing would be the logical thing to do. But that's only if you're interested. And if you're not, there's plenty of other channels on YouTube that provide content that you might find enjoyable.